Hey, this is Mike with AshTractorMike.com talking about PTO shafts today and I've got three little pieces of advice to give you to make sure these PTO shafts last a long time and you don't have problems with them, especially if you're buying a new implement. And that's what tip number one relates to. If you're buying something new to go on the back of your tractor, always make sure before you operate it that the PTO shaft is the right length. If you're buying a used piece of equipment, you don't know if it came off a big tractor, a little tractor, or what the previous owner was using it for. And if you're buying a new piece of equipment, normally they won't be too short, but they could be too long. So here's what we want to do. Most manufacturers recommend that the PTO male and female parts that fit together have an overlap of at least six inches to carry the torque load. Any less than that, and you risk twisting the shaft under load and you want to check your owner's manual and see maybe they require more I don't know but six inches is absolutely the minimum so we don't we don't want too short a PTO shaft also we don't want too long a PTO shaft even on a new piece of equipment manufacturers don't know what tractor the implement is going on so they have kind of a fudge factor in there and I actually have seen manufacturers make new equipment that had the wrong length PTO shaft, it was too long for most North American tractors. And when that happens, what happens is it puts pressure on this shaft when it, when it comes together at its tightest point, which is usually dead level, and it's either going to make something bad happen with the PTO shaft of the tractor or blow out the gearbox, and we don't want that. So what you want to do when you get the new piece of equipment before you take it to the field, take the PTO shaft off, raise the implement up as high as you'll have it, check that, make sure the PTO shaft will go on, dead level, make sure it'll go on, and as low as it'll go on, make sure it'll go on, so you're not in a bind in any place. If it is too long and you can't get the PTO shaft extended back enough to get it on the tractor, you've got a problem. You need to either take it to a machine shop or, or yourself, cut off the two halves so they slide back and forth. That's a, that's a big danger. That's tip number one. Tip number two, if you're going to be storing your implement outside, if you're like a lot of us and we don't have enough room to keep everything inside and it has a PTO shaft and you can do this, take the PTO shaft off and put it inside. Uh, most people have room in the garage for the PTO shaft and especially if you've got one like this one that's real easy to take off. You just take the back half off like that, disconnect the shield here and take the front half off and your PTO shaft is off. You can take this and put it in a barn or a, uh, your, uh, your garage and make sure you don't have a problem with moisture because equipment stored outside tends to draw moisture and if you get moisture and a little bit of rust in these two halves of this PTO, uh, you can have trouble getting it in and out and have a real nightmare on your hands. Now one of my viewers said when they store theirs inside, they actually take the two halves apart and I think that's a good idea because if you have the two halves apart and you still get just a little bit of rust somewhere, it's a lot easier to get rid of it if they're apart than having to pull them apart, get the rust out, and then get them back together again. The last tip is, if you put a new shield on your PTO shaft, you may want to trim off part of the shield so you can get the two halves back together again. And I'm going to show you right here what you need to do. If you don't, your shield may extend past the PTO male and female parts and it makes it real difficult to get them connected again. What you want to do is trim off part of the shield so the shaft itself sticks out and then it makes it a lot easier to get the two halves together again and, and put them back on the tractor if you pull them apart. Hey, I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this with other tractor enthusiasts. And hey, if you got questions, put them below. I'll try to answer them. Hey, thanks for watching.